Hello everybody watching at home, this is Walking and Talking with Phoenix and today we're going to be talking about the normalization of gay. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of things going on in the world at the moment regards the, if you could call it a gay movement, as opposed to a straight movement, I don't know. Um, you know, there's a lot of people, you know, stamping their feet saying that they deserve, uh, you know, gay marriage and, you know, a lot of our governments refusing to give these people the right to officialize their love in a ceremonious in legal fashion. Um, there's also things going on with television and repression. Um, repression of certain kinds of exposure regards lesbian and homosexual content. Uh, Adventure Time recently, um, you know, I read a post on Facebook about it, how it was going to be, uh, you know, stopped the whole entire production of the cartoon because, you know, it's, it's aimed for children, but apparently there was some kind of reference to a lesbian relationship developing between two of the characters and um, because of that they were, they were just gonna can the whole show and this is this is the thing you know you got religious uh, religious discrimination against gay love gay marriage um, just gays in general you got governments refusing and you know uh, gays the right to get married but I guess it's all tied in with religion but even in the media on um, this discrimination and in general, I think, you know, I even heard that Tony Abbott recently uh, was taught, I don't know, I heard about this through a friend, that he was going to have anti-gay chaplains installed in, like, private schools or something. So, generally, there's this all-pervading discrimination. And today is food for thought. And my basic point, which I think, you know, nullifies the typical reason that these people have for discriminating, generally, it's along the lines of, you know, we are meant to have sex to procreate. That is the, the natural function of sex. You find a mate, you fuck, you procreate. And if, if you're having sex with someone of your own gender, you can't procreate. It's purposeless and unnatural. I think that's the general argument um, besides the religious thing. of It's just like, don't do it because it's a sin and you're it, Sodom and all that shit, you know, which is pretty illogical. So let's not even try to rebuke that. It's pointless. Um, let's just focus on that point that it's unnatural and unproductive. So, last time I checked when we were looking at the population of the Earth in terms of humans, um, it was kind of full, this place is. It's, it's kind of overloaded and there's, there's crumbs, you know, falling off the plate and you have immigrants running out of space and fit conditions to live in and going around the globe trying to find, you know, asylum. And, and refuge, you know? So, I don't know, I don't think that we should really be kind of enforcing and advocating and, and pushing the whole straight movement and the need to be more productive and more procreative because I think we're being procreative enough. I think there's enough fucking going on and it's fucking spelling some catastrophic issues for our future, you understand? If anything, I think it makes more sense to start pushing the agenda of homosexual relationships. That's what we should be pushing instead of normalizing, you know, straight relationships. And this is what it comes down to. You know, I say this topic is about the normalization of gay, but who, who determined that it was, you know, that, that being straight was the norm? I mean, homosexuality has been going on throughout the, throughout the ages. Egyptians and Greeks, back in the day, it was totally normal. And it was a delicacy and a luxury to indulge in little boys, you know? And things change with time, things change with culture, and some things become more or less acceptable. But I think one thing we can all agree on is that homosexuality and feeling love for somebody regardless of their a physical form isn't anything new. It's been going on for a long time, and that's the thing that this comes down to. Instead of normalizing this way or that, one way over the other, making it seem more superior to be straight, and making it be more inferior and discriminative to be gay. I think we should be focusing more so on what the point is of all of this. And I think the point of it is love. Now, if you look at love, it's something which is essential. It's not physical. You can't really measure it with a tape or a weighing machine. You know, it's, it's something which is relative to the user and to the feeler and the receiver love. So why do we set a criteria for the right to express love, the right to get married, to officialize your love and your bond, 
why do we set that criteria based on physical attributes instead of the b simple basis that two people love each other? And this is, this is my argument for those that say, well, you know, same gender relationships are unnatural. Okay, even if, even if the whole entire, you know, productive, you know, oh, you can't procreate in a gay relationship, so it's pointless. I've already nullified that. We don't need to procreate. But even if you're still saying it's unnatural and it's just wrong because it's unnatural, look at this fucking world we're in. Is, is any of this natural? We live in a world where we process nature and package it and sell it on shelves as dreams, but it's still superficial. It's all aesthetic. And none of it's really authentic or organic anymore. It's all sterile and processed. So why do people kick up a stink in particular to gay relationships? Here's my point against you that think, you know, it's unnatural, right? Okay, so you might be religious, you might not, you might just have a problem with gay relationships because you think that, you know, you can't fucking, it's unnatural, right? And you should only have sex to be procreative. That, you know, that's, like I said, part of it. Here's my point. I don't know, I think that whole entire argument goes out the window, the whole argument of it's unnatural. The moment you start realizing and and, and seeing how much sex has changed and the nature of sex has changed. We no longer just have sex to procreate. We no longer just have sex because I'm a man and you're a female and we fit like this in this equation. We have sex, you know, with, with prote protection, with condoms, contraception pills, implants, all sorts of needles, all different ways to prevent one from falling pregnant, having a child. And we don't call this unnatural. You know, sex for leisure and pleasure instead of sex for function and purpose. You know, so we accept this st standardized and normalized form of sex. Sex for leisure, sex for pleasure. Even though it really defies the original point of sex. You know, these days people fuck not only to have children, sometimes they don't want children. They only fuck to bond with each other, to express their love. So, how is it that on one hand you can normalize and say this is fine, it's fine that we've changed the nature of sex and that it's more a leisurely thing, not as purposeful anymore. But on the other hand, it's not fine for gay people to have sex because it's unnatural. I mean, at the end of the day, if the point of it is to bond and express your love, what, are you saying that gay people don't have the right to feel what they feel? Because let's just move beyond the argument that it's a choice. It's not a fucking choice. How, why would you choose to, to be a part of a minority that cops so much shit and, and so much complication in their lives because of their, their differences and how little people understand those differences. Why would you choose that? You know, so is that what you're saying? That people, I don't know, there's laws now governing what people are allowed to feel? I mean, if the point of sex is to express your love and appreciation, and I do believe we all have the sacred right to love and appreciate and want to share that with somebody and share that connection and have it be received. You know, and there's no point to judge gay sex over straight sex because at the end of the day, a lot of people are fucking these days not to have kids anyway. It's just to show appreciation, to bond and to feel good. And it doesn't matter if you're a man with a man or a woman with a woman or a woman with a man or he, she with a he, she doesn't make a difference. All those different combinations, you can still meet that criteria of sex for leisure, pleasure, bonding and love. On that basis, anything goes, and hey, if someone really wants a child so bad, we do have a population overpopulation problem. If you're in a gay relationship, you can adopt. There's plenty of children out there that need people to look after them, and hey, maybe these people will do just as good a job, if not a better job, than a lot of straight people out there. I mean, who are we to judge? I don't think your sexual preference should have any weight on how you raise your children and how much of a good parent you'd be. I think if people are tying people's sexual preferences with their capacity to be a good parent, I think they've got their priorities mixed up and I think that's a bit perverse. I think the two things are totally separate and you know, there could be two guys that have adopted a child, doesn't mean they don't have females interacting in their life, still giving the child that feminine presence, you know? So I think people are way too judgmental, people are way too double standardy with stretching the limits so that it fits them and what they enjoy doing because it's natural and normal for them. But then when there's someone out there that's outside the norm, people start thinking, oh, well, that's just a little bit too unnormal. 
You know, where do you set the limits? Where do you set the laws? How do you discriminate them apart from yourself? At the end of the day, we're all the same. We're all on this planet to love and to feel and experience and share all of those things with each other, to share love and experience and feelings. And I really don't think that any laws should be able to touch that because really the nature of life, the nature of sex, and the nature of why we have sex has changed so much that all the age-old arguments of why homosexual and gay relationships are wrong are just out the window and nullified. And uh, that's all I got to say about that. Thanks for watching. Feel free to share and like and subscribe. And keep tuned for more Foodle for Your Noodle with Walking and Talking with Phoenix. Thank you.